Now, before anyone comes for me in the comments, I would like to offer this distinguished gentleman as a peace offering. Okay, now go away. Thank you. Alright y'all, welcome back to Camille's Harem. I am Camille. If you are a returning subscriber to this channel, you're probably wondering, what the poop are you doing here? Uh, excellent question. This will be my first video, solo video, into the YouTube sphere. If you are new here, just ignore everything else that I just said. So if you are a little bit confused, um, when we decided that we wanted to do our YouTube channel, um, I really wanted to make sure that we still got to do kind of what we wanted to do on this channel um and just have our own creative liberties so mine will be mostly uh rant based so if you do listen to the podcast then you know that i'm very passionate about certain things and so that is just going to bleed into this consider this camille's rant time you're part of Camille's Rant Squad now. Congratulations. We have little badges. So today I wanted to talk about Castlevania and in particular, obviously, if you read the title, I want to talk about season three because there are a lot of things to be said and I would like to complain about them. Welcome to my TED talk. Here's the thing. Season one and two were great. Season three has a lot going on and I want to kind of break that up. Granted, these are my opinions for things, um, so you can ignore them, you can argue, I don't care. Some I will be backing up with like, this is good writing and storytelling, this is poop. I use that word a lot, apparently. I'm really trying not to swear, so bear with me. So I do want to talk about the good and the bad and the more bad, and then as well as a what would I have done differently and what we can kind of hope to expect for season four, um, because I feel like at this point, there's still a lot up in the air and everyone's just waiting for the new season to come out. So again, my opinions, take it or leave it. I don't really care. Also, I will say that I have not watched any or listened to any reviews, any videos basically in general about this season or the show because I didn't want it to affect what I have to say. Um, and I have watched the show twice now. I binged the entire show just last week, and it was interesting to see, you know, what things stayed the same and what things kind of changed, but we're gonna get into it. All right, first on the agenda of rantings of a mad woman with depression and too much time on her hands, let's talk about the good, okay? I have about a page and a half M maybe notes <laughs> for the good things in the show so that might give you some indication as what to look forward to um let's get into it so the first thing that really sticks out to me in terms of the good in the show is trevor and saifa are a power couple period i really like that we got to see their chemistry more in the season and actually seeing them together um and it's really hard to kind of talk about this because while i like things about their relationship there are actually things that i want to talk about things that i'm frustrated about for them so i'm going to toe that line carefully um, but i think they have really great written romance between the two even though we don't really get to see it super overtly you know they're very like <laughs> yeah they have the sexy fun times but y'all don't get to see it which okay but i will say that it is very organic it feels realistic um and we kind of get to see that there is like that base in friendship you know that they've come together and that it just doesn't feel like a, Wait, we have to put them together because they're the main characters and they're both hot which they are okay i'm here for shirtless trevor i'm gonna be honest but that's besides the point but kind of like breaking off those two things um i will say for trevor like it was nice to see that he kind of had more growth this season compared to the other two seasons where he really starts to question like why do i do things why am i such a himbo and what do I do? You know, he has that whole, um, the whole scene where he's at the the pond and he's talking to himself um, and then he gets interrupted by the judge. So it's like you get to see him start to think about why he does certain things um, and you don't really 
get to see that in other previous seasons, that like self-reflection as much. I really wish we would have gotten to see more of that. So it was kind of like a little tiny, a little baby sampler platter for what I hope to see next season in terms of him. And I feel like in this season, we also get to see how his failures impact him. Um, in the other seasons, you know, he kind of feels more apathetic, like he's lost his family, which a side note, I really want to see more of the Belmont family. Like if we had a whole prequel crap on his family, just his family, I'd pay for that. He kind of goes from apathetic to a little more self-aware as to why he does the things that he does rather than just doing them. Like he's taking more action. I feel like in the other two seasons, it's like you are a bum and a drunk and you know, and he kind of is growing from that. Baby steps, we're doing baby steps here and I'm trying not to be like, give more, but it's fine, it's fine. Now with Saifa, I will say that she is an absolute queen and anyone who says otherwise, I will find you and I will fight you for that. Hands down, one of the best characters. But I really liked that this season, we got to see at the end, these rose colored glasses kind of come off because for her fighting these night creatures has really been a lot of fun. Um, for her, it's all about adventure. And I think you get to see this like, oh, wow people suck kind of moment. And that's really fun to see with her. And I feel like with these two instances for both of their characters, it sets them up for more growth next season um, because I feel like they could have pushed it a bit further this season and they didn't. And we're gonna, sh we're gonna wait and we're gonna talk about that later, but that's kind of what I have to say about them. Overall, I don't have a ton of complaints um, beyond the fact that I would have liked to seen at least one smooch between them, but that's neither here nor there. Netflix doesn't care what I think. Now, another good thing that I liked for this season was with Alucard. I felt like we got to see him a little more human than in the past. And I'm not talking about the end of season two when after he kills Dracula, like he has that breakdown, which is so good. But I mean, it's good to see him in this season that he's lonely and you really get to see that sense of he wants companionship and he misses his friends. It's good to see that he's not just some blonde edgelord because that, frankly, that's kind of... That's kind of how he's written. Um, and so it's nice to kind of push away from that and show that he is more human than what we've kind of seen before. Now at the next character, uh, looking into Hector, I will say he does magic good, Dan, he's less naive kind of a little bit. I have thoughts on him and we're gonna wait until later because that's all I've, mm -hmm. he's stupid. And going off of Hector, we have who I think is one of the best, if not the best, character in the show, Isaac. I feel like him and Saifa are like, they're so close, they're both so good. But I feel like Isaac really came into his own this season. Um, in my opinion, I feel like he has the best character arc and the best dialogue. And you really get to see awesome world building through his perspective and super interesting storylines. But one of the best things about him as well is that he really, pushes the overall narrative forward um, as compared to like other storylines. And I think just overall, his was more of like a character driven storyline and that really works in his benefit um, because he has to figure out who he is and what he wants. And I think just that was one of the best things that they did this season is they absolutely did his character justice. Going into the vampire squad, um, the only thing I've written about them is I like their world building that they bring to the table. Yep, I have thoughts on them as well, but they did that, I suppose. But moving on, looking at Saint Germain, I think he was a super intriguing character, um, very, unexpected, if you will. Um, I would be bummed if we don't see him again, because if we don't, then I'm kind of like, why were you here? You're super cool and interesting, but 
at the end of the day, he's kind of, if we don't see him again, he's kind of just there to help Trevor and Sypha's storyline move along because he had the little eye jewel thing. You know, it, if you look at it that way, it's kind of like, what are you doing here? So I think he's a fun character. I think his storyline has the possibility to open things up more for the world, if you will, with the Infinite Corridor. Um, so there's potential there. I'll say that. But at the same time, we don't know what's going to happen to him. So what a do. Now, with my two least favorite characters, we have Taka and Sumi and... I will say that through them, uh, we got to see more world building. I feel like that comes up a lot when I can't think of anything good to say about a character. <laughs> they help us explore this world more, so you get a gold sticker for that. Um, I was really nice to see that we got to see how Cho's vampire court worked in Japan, um, but at the same time, like it kind of bummed me out that we didn't get to see her in season two more. She doesn't say anything in season two. She's just there to be all stoic and smoky. And then just a few more side characters that I thought worked well for the season. We have the captain who, again, had one of the best scenes with Isaac when they were talking about humanity and like the good and bad between the two. And, and he kind of helps Isaac like have some more like introspection. Is that a word? Maybe. And then we have other characters like Prior Salo, who's creepy and gross, and I would bet anything that he has crusty fungus between his toes. Um, he was like right on the edge of being good evil, like good to watch evil and like comedically evil because it's like, you're evil for, for what? You did this for what? But it does make sense that it's like, oh, well, the night creature did this oogly boogly and made him crazy where I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll accept that because I, I do think that he is, he, he gives off spooky vibes and I think that's fun just for the overall aesthetic of that storyline. And then the last character that gets honorable mention, I will say the judge. I think he is a very good example for, you know, someone who does good things, but isn't a good person. Um, or actually, no, I wouldn't say that he's a good person that does bad things because good people don't kill children. So over the course of the season, you really get to get to know him more and he's kind of like this fun like not fun he's grumpy but he gives good advice and you almost root for him and then you find out at the end of the season that he you know overall like yes thank you this was a good thing that they did in the season they did not bring dracula back which i gotta tell you if they had done that they had pulled that crap in my house i would have been mad because the last thing that this poor man wants is to be brought back into a world full of people that he hates. He wants to be with his lady. And so just let him vibe. So I it, I would have been very frustrated if they were like, he's back. It's like, no, pick a different struggle. So I, I did like that they didn't really go through with that storyline because it just would have felt kind of lazy. And honestly, if they had brought Dracula back and he just killed everyone, cause he would have been like, grumpy about being separated from Lisa again, I would have fully supported that. Going into the bad of the season, I will say that Trevor and Sypha's storyline was ultimately a bit disappointing because most of the character growth comes on her end when she does have a realization of like, mm, people really do suck. Yeah, they do. I feel like we could have gotten a little bit more for them. We could have pushed a little bit further. Like with Trevor, we don't really get to see all that much because the scene where he is interrupted by the judge, he's interrupted by the judge. And so it's like we get an inkling of what's going on in his mind being, but we don't really like get more out of that other than like at the very end when he tells Sypha like, now you're in my world or whatever the poopy says in his attractive accent. It's just kind of disappointing because their storyline almost seems like a placeholder. And I understand that they don't really know what's going on in the grand scheme of things with these vampire ladies. Like even in season two, they don't know about all the workings behind. They just knew about Dracula. So it's like, yeah, they don't know, but 
how are we going to fix it next season? How are we going to come full circle? Because y'all got to get back into the game and actually push the overall plot forward. Please and thank you. Also, I will forever be disappointed that we do not get to see smooching from those two characters. <sighs> Like, y'all really came in and said, yeah, they're together, but you don't actually get to see it. Yeah, we're going to hint that Trevor is this beefcake, but y'all don't get to see their relationship. Well, boo you, creators, and Netflix in general, because you're the cloud entity that I will complain to. Boo freaking you. I would have liked to have seen more of, like, how did they actually, like... I'm disappointed and potentially just sad and horny, so that might have something to do with it, too. I don't know. Ooh, actually, I will say I felt like this just gets perpetuated further in season three with Trevor's family. I know I said earlier, like, give me that good good with his family. They do a lot of show don't tell in this show, and it just drives me bananas, and I feel like they do that a lot with Trevor's storyline um, and his whole family thing where it's like, yeah, you tell me I'm the only one left. Blah, blah, blah. I don't care. Just give me more meat. Don't just tell me about the sandwich. I want to see the sandwich. But the next one for me, the big point that I'm like, why did they do it this way was with Alucard. His storyline was so incredibly frustrating the entire season. I wanted to scream. Actually, I did scream a few times for various reasons. For one, I feel like <sighs> it was frustrating to see that everything for him was like fueled by his loneliness, but you have to wonder like, have you never, like fam, you've only, you have to wonder, you've only been alone for like a month or two at this point and you've never done that before. Like he says that he has grown up super fast and so I feel like I get the sense that he's been on his own and been doing his own thing for some time now and yet now it's like now you care now you're gonna go crazy because you're dumb I'm sorry he's he's a pretty dumb child and I am just over it by the end of the season I wanted to bonk him over the head with a horny bat because he's just dumb I feel like they had to have some sort of excuse for him to never leave the castle and just be there and whatever it's like you couldn't have thought of anything else in terms of you know some sort of fortitude so you could at least go and have some human interaction elsewhere. I don't know. They were just, it, it almost felt like it was a little like, well, we have to make him go crazy. So let's just make it to where he can leave. And yeah, I understand. It's like, yeah, you can't move the castle and you have to be there to protect things. But like, honestly, what idiot human is going to come and be like, well, oh, I'm going to go dick around in this abandoned castle. <laughs> No, I just, it didn't feel compelling enough to me. It just felt like they were like, we have to make him stay put. Okay, cool. Now we have to make him go crazy. Yeah, that's fine. He's only been there for actually really not that long, and he's a grown adult and has most likely been on his own before. Okay, cool. Let's just go with it. Or we're going to give him two uh, creepy companions that are just dumb and stupid and they're going to ruin his life and he's going to end up killing them and that's going to make him go crazy and make him turn into his father basically okay cool let's do it that alone for me is like the biggest what the f moment in terms of the season and just what they do with the storyline in general and and the reason i say that is because it just feels incredibly rushed that the whole deal with the twins, are they twins? Uh, I don't know. They have the same eyebrows and they're siblings, obviously, because of their eyebrows. But I feel like that was super rushed. Like if you look in the grand scheme of things, like they were only there for a few days. And the fact that all of this goes down in a few days is just kind of like, <laughs> why? Why, did, why are we here? And I will say for my own 
opinion like and and this after watching the uh season again it's like i have mixed feelings about this i feel like his whole need for companionship kind of gets watered down when it just boils down to something sexual because in previous seasons we kind of see like he is apathetic in a lot of ways to humans and you know then you get to see where he's like oh actually i i do like this and i and i want companionship and and i think that was well for one they were probably like that's a good enough excuse for him to lose his damn mind like obviously you've never been in quarantine for almost a year now buddy get together but i do feel like by making on a dime they like changed it to be this like we're gonna seduce him it, it's like yes the twins fill the void of him wanting companionship but it almost taints it in a way because it's like we went from zero to a hundred real fast and it's you have to wonder it's like did he want companionship or did he just did he did he just did he just want smooches i don't know and this is why i say that it's because for one he's only known them for a few days and you get really no indication on his end that he is down for sexy fun times so it's like was he really just there wanting friends because trevor and sypha were his friends so did he think like oh these people fill the void or was he down for sexy fun times like he gave no indication that that is what he was into and then all of a sudden he was whack like it just i know that they're bad people and it's like we're gonna take advantage of his loneliness and seduce him but it's also like but you took advantage of his loneliness and seduced him which it's like yeah of course i would do that because they're bad and now i just feel like i'm like what is it how how do i feel about this because the first time i watched it i was like that is that is whack and so does not feel out of character for him but then watching it the second time i'm like yeah i guess they would seduce him and, and like they can do that because they're not good people but at the same time like did we have to do it this way i think that's where my frustration lies like in a way it just kind of feels like the easy way out of it because it's like he on his end he was never like at least to me unless i'm just like Bleh he never really shows like i do want to have the sexy fun times with you like the whole time i just kind of feel like he's like yes i have friends again um and so i when uh, you ever just watch a scene that makes your butt clench from the cringe that's how i felt watching that scene with him and the tw and the siblings the twins i don't maybe they're cousins and they just do their eyebrows like that for funsies but overall it's just quite frustrating and i do have more to say about that but his storyline is something that i could just go and ramble on for eon so we'll circle back to it um but put a mental pin in that because i feel like they did him dirty and that is very frustrating to watch let's talk about hector the idiot child i can't stand him i cannot I don't care if Theo James is his voice actor, I cannot, I want to punch his dumb little face. I, I feel like the whole thing with Hector is that he is constantly just a pawn for other people. I feel like he just had a regressed character arc. So if you are, if your character arc is you progressing towards something like a better version of yourself i don't know what it looks like if you have a regressed one but whatever it looks like that's what his is and that's not necessarily a bad thing like you know you're not constantly progressing and becoming better as a person you know you fluctuate but it is so frustrating to watch where it's like you stupid idiot you got basically kidnapped by Jeffree Star because Carmela looks like Jeffree Star. I'm sorry I said it. Now you have to think about that too and live with that fact. But you get kidnapped by Jeffree Star and then you realize like, wow, I've made a big stinky dookie because I lack judgment. And that's what happens when you don't have human interaction, Hector. Okay, you're a dumb idiot. So I feel like he's just become a pawn from one vampire to the next and it just keeps going i i can't do another season of him being 
so dumb with his dumb haircut and his dumb gray puebes. I can't do it. I cannot live like this. And I think it is made worse with his storyline uh, with Lenore because holy cannoli, she is a frustratingly terrible character in and of herself. And I get it. She's a vampire. She's supposed to not be nice. But that's not where my that's not where my hatred, for lack of a better word, lies. Uh, because obviously you can have an antagonist that's still like good and intriguing. But the thing with Lenore for her is like she's all like, I'm a diplomat and I'm really good at getting people to do what I want. And that was really interesting at first because it's it was to me, I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, how is she going to use her skill set to to work this out with this idiot child? You know, and I was intrigued by that. And then at the end of the day, it just boils down to her using sex against him where it's like, haven't we been here before with this trope? And that's that to me is almost borderline <laughs> insulting. She actually has two tropes. So you know, like the one, you have your trope where it's like, you have this attractive woman and she uses sex to get what she wants. So basically like the femme fatale. Uh, I may be using that incorrectly, but you're, you're picking up what I'm putting down. And then I feel like she also has the trope of like, <laughs> I'm just an innocent girl and I'm not, I'm not threatening. And then it's like, psych, yes I am. It's like, well, yeah, no, she would be threatening because she's a vampire for Pete's sake, okay? She can beat you up with her pinky. Don't pull this bull crap that she's gonna be all non-threatening because she looks like she's 15 and eats raspberries. Those two things were very frustrating because I feel like if you're going to make her a diplomatic character, her whole thing is diplomacy and wanting to use her intellect to get what she wants. Um, that was super cool, but you're going to use that and then be like, actually, no, we're just going to give her boobs and she's going to use those. That is so frustrating because it makes you wonder. It's like, okay, well, you know, say Hector wasn't into ladies. If he was a gay character, what would she have done? Or if she has worked with other people in terms of being a diplomat and they weren't into ladies or it was a group of people or you know what I mean? Like it just... <laughs> It just opens the door to more questions as to why did you even give her this label of she's supposed to be good at what she does when really it just boils down to how good she is at seducing someone. Miss me with that BS. I'm over it. Although at the same time, like, it's not like it's that hard to manipulate someone like Hector because he is a big stupid idiot. Um, and yet here we are. Like, she... She easily could have done whatever to manipulate that child because he has two brain cells and yet it's like, yeah, I get it. Sex sells, baby, but did we have to? It just felt insulting to her character. That That is what it came down to. Going off of one vampire lady that is very frustrating to me to another one, let's talk about Carmilla. Um, she is pointless in this season, she does nothing, okay? Now, especially, I didn't realize that she looked like Jeffree Star until I watched season three, and then I was like, well, she's ruined. I thought she was really cool in season two, and now she just looks like an evil man child who sells makeup. And just in this season, I feel like they were like, you know what, let's just put her on the shelf because she did a lot in season two. She had a purpose in season two, okay? She was conniving and smart and did all these things in season two, but forget that. Let's have her do nothing, basically, and just mention how she likes to have orgies. The frustrating thing with the vampire ladies is it's like, yeah, we get it. They they have sex that's cool good for them let them do their thing but I feel like at the same time it almost felt like it's like that's really all they boil down to is their sexuality and it's like give them something more to do and I feel like Carmilla probably falls under that the worst because she really just is like here's my idea 
I'm done. I'm going to go boink three nameless, faceless men. Goodbye, where it's like, she probably had the easiest run of the season because, I mean, if I was going to spend my way... If I was going to be spending my time in a castle with a bunch of vampires, like, yeah, she got the best pull of the straw, but still frustrating because I feel like they dwindled her character down to make room for other characters. Um, and that storyline just kind of felt like they were shoving too many characters in because it just felt overwhelming. <laughs> at times because we just had too much going on. And then with our last two leading vampire ladies, I actually really liked Striga and Marana. I feel like they were pushing forward the narrative um, in terms of what they were trying to accomplish, and that was really cool. Um, and again, this comes down to the issue of too many cooks in a rushed storyline with way too many other storylines going on. Uh, we didn't get enough of them so it felt like oh this is nice um but at the same time we borderline on they are the token lesbians they were super cool Miranda had the coolest eyeliner she looked awesome and striga could crush you with her little baby fingers without a second thought and at the same time it's like why did we spend so much time on the and hector being stupid i don't know but at the end of the day, I felt like they were done a little dirty. Um, I don't know how that's gonna change in season four. If we're gonna be doing this again next season with 37 different storylines, I'm gonna cry. Oh, also side note, before we move on to more bad things, this is kind of talking about the vampire squad. Squad as a whole um, is I feel like they just kind of put the vampires into sexuality boxes and and at the same time i'm like am i nitpicking or am i just genuinely frustrated maybe both i feel like it's like we have lenore who uses sex to get what she wants and then we have carmilla who she likes sex period <laughs> okay go be pointless somewhere else and then we have striga and morana where it's like they're lesbians who have sex because obviously like there's no issue with having characters that have sex like that's not what i'm saying by no means am i approved with that sort of thing but i feel like it's like it almost felt a little too on the nose of being like hey they have sex where it's like who who else is who else are we saying that with with our characters in this show other than Godbrand in season two but he is also a big stupid idiot so eat him out of here you know I just feel like it was a little too on the nose of being like you know what these ladies do yeah I think you know what they do but we're gonna tell you because we we can't just we can't just show it we have to tell it and oh, like I've said before, that is an overarching issue in this season. And you can tell as I keep talking about things that I hate, the more I touch my hair because I'm going crazy talking about this. The number of times I've ranted about this season is obviously not enough times because it still riles me up. I do wanna say just one other small thing in terms of like, I didn't love this um, before I get into um, the Alucard storyline, once again, um, I do feel like with the judge, they could have been a little more subtle with his, uh, like the scene where he's coming out of the room and he's all like, <laughs> like, obviously it's like, yeah, you're up to something. That's a little sus. I feel like they could have been a little more subtle with that. Um, I do remember when I first watched it, I was like, yeah, no, that's weird. Like either he's up to something or he is like dying of cancer and is trying to hide it where it's like, even if they had done that, like given him some sort of like red herring, like have him like <clears throat> cough into a, a, a handkerchief and hands blood or something like make it seem like he has tuberculosis. I don't know, like that would have been better than just being like, hey, what are you doing in that room? Why are you acting guilty? And then you find out like, oh, you killed little baby children. Okay, cool. Kind of saw that coming when you put two to two together. You know what I mean? You know what I mean. Okay, so I, I know I already went into Alucard's storyline, um, but I feel like this needs to be expanded upon because it deals with him and it is a huge issue in the season as a whole and that is the storyline of him with Taka and Sumi because yeah we get to see like why are you Sir Alucard acting this way but as a whole why in the heck 
did we do this route for this storyline? Because I understand that they are characters that are basically supposed to die by the end of the season. Um, you know, that's not really where my issue lies. It's like, yeah, they really get the, uh, we have no character beyond we have to kill vampires where it's like if they're going to be around more i would want to see more um but that's neither here nor there like as as kind of frustrating as that is it's like don't come in here and act like you're the only one that suffered at the hand of vampires like we're all dealing with this crap so they really just come off as spoiled little children and <laughs> Frankly, am I going to say that they deserve to die? I mean, I'm not going to not say it. I'm not going to outright say it, but I just think their whole storyline was a little bit rushed and also dumb because it's like, you came here to study under Alucard, who offered you so much he offered to teach you magic he offered to show you things you've known him for less than a week like it really is only a few days and you are going to get upset because this man who has made food for you you little freeloaders and has also like trained you done all these things for you let you stay in his home and then you're gonna come back and be like mm, well you're not showing us this one part in the castle so now we're gonna have to kill you because we obviously have trust issues and we never went to therapy like not only was it frustrating that we didn't actually really get to see them doing training because it was so rushed that they had to be like oh well we're being all buddy buddy man, man, man. like we didn't actually get to see much of what they're doing to become better vampire hunters um but i feel like overall we just have really skewed motivations from them because at first their motivations were well we want to hunt vampires and so will you help us and Alucard he being who he is he's a good person he's like yeah of course I'll help you because I'm not a mean person and so he does so much for them but then they just like on a dime they're like well you're not showing us stuff fast enough it's like who are you you get to come into my house eat my food, use my weapons, and then you're gonna kill me because I'm not showing you crap fast enough? Like, it would have just made way more sense if their motivation was to kill him the entire time and that, so they were just tricking him um, because the route that they took doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because it's like, he's half human. He's not like a full vampire. So the fact that they're like, like, you're being mean, and you're just like every other vampire, and, and me, 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 and now we have to kill your naked body. Like, that is dumb. They should have just had it to where they were like, oh, actually, we were going to kill you, because it doesn't matter if you're half vampire. We're going to we're gonna kill your naked butt anyway. And psych, you've been tricked. That makes more sense than what they did, because now it's just like... You expect me to believe that this, we went from here to here in like three days and I'm just supposed to be okay with it. And I feel like just with that whole thing overall, you know, it makes you wonder how would things have been different in terms of that storyline if they weren't so rushed? Um, because I felt like it was very like put on fast forward in terms of just the progress between oh they meet him oh uh well they're not satisfied so they have to seduce him and then kill him and or not kill him try to kill him and then he kills them and then he puts their bodies on spikes and then he's like oh i'm actually cuckoo for cocoa puffs i don't know it just it makes you wonder I'm like if they hadn't rushed it if they weren't rushed with that storyline how would things have been different but at the same time it's kind of a moot point because this is the crap that we get and we just have to deal with it you get what you get and you still throw a fit i think going off of this this as well it was weirdly off-putting to me that all of a sudden this show got super sexual out of nowhere um because it's like the show's obviously very violent and very gory but then all of a sudden it's like boobs and pueves and the faint outline of a penis which i did not care or need to see never please i didn't want this um and it really makes me wonder, like, why? why are we here <laughs> just to suffer? Because I just, I feel like I say because, I don't have the answers. I, I'm wondering, I'm like, are we just seeing 
Are we just seeing scenes like this because the creators were like, we can do whatever the hell we want. We have all this power. Like, what is the motivation of using sex scenes like that? I, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I feel like it's like, are they just trying to show, are we only going to get manipulative sex scenes? Basically, what I'm trying to say is, I've been deprived of a healthy sexual relationship between Trevor and Saifa and been given this gross cafeteria food version instead. Okay, I came here for gourmet and, and I get cardboard pizza. Maybe I'm just complaining about that, but it, it just feels weird because I feel like Lenore and Hector's was unnecessary because they could have made her a better character, but that's, you know, neither here nor there. They didn't need to use her sexuality to get what she wants. Um, and then just the whole, like, with Alucard, I'm like, y'all got sexy out of nowhere. Okay. It's weird. It's whack. And I'm like, are we going to keep doing this? Because I don't think I have the mental fortitude to keep doing this in another season. Okay. I just... It's too much and I'm tired. Again, like I feel like it's one of those things that it's it's hard to fully criticize because you have to wonder like, were the writers purposefully writing it this way? You know, like were they purposefully going for uncomfortable sex scenes? Um, is, was that their whole deal? Or were they just kind of like, oh, well we can do this now, so let's do it. Like, yeah, obviously it's a mature series, but I, sometimes I'm like, <sighs> But why, you know? If I don't want to watch a scene that makes me want to pull my intestines out of my stomach, you know? I just, are your, your intestines aren't in your stomach. They're like between your stomach and your bum. That's not what I mean. You know when you're like, you're watching a show or a movie with your parents and the sex scene comes on and you're like, wow, I've never wanted to die more in my life. That's how both of these felt, except you're not with your parents, you're just alone and you have to think about where you went wrong with your life choices to end up here. That, that is what those felt like. And I just want to know why, because I feel like I'm being punished for watching this show by having to go through these scenes. And I feel like with those storylines, if you haven't clued on, at this point, obviously those two storylines are my least favorite because I felt like they were the most rushed and I feel like they relied, frankly, I feel like, yeah, I feel like they relied on those two sex scenes to be stronger, if you will, when really they, they weren't. Like, if you really have a good storyline, you don't need something like that to push the plot forward. And I'm not saying, like, don't ever write sex scenes in your stuff. Nah, girl, we're not talking about that. But I'm saying, like, they are weaker compared to the two, and I felt like they were trying to overcompensate. Also, one more thing before I continue on with my rant. For me, I feel like it was a huge double standard with the whole Lenore and Hector storyline, where at the end, she's like, I'm basically gonna keep him as his sex life. I feel like people would have lost their minds, rightfully so, would have lost their minds if the roles were reversed. Um, the fact that he is a dumb a baby, a little, a little baby man, that doesn't negate the fact that it's like, okay, this is whack. Well, we're having a sex slave storyline. And so I do feel like there was a double standard there that I'm like, did anyone else kind of see this and think, mm, I'm uncomfy. But the fact that he is a dude, it's less whack. It shouldn't be. Um, but here we are, like, I, I don't feel like if Hector was a lady and Lenore was a dude, I don't, I honestly feel like they would not have gone that route, straight up. And yet, here we are. So, I don't know, like, if, if you have seen people, like, get over up in arms about that, I'm curious, you can comment below, but I, I haven't really heard anything, and that's just always something that's really says to me so there's that but moving on into actually what I would have done differently let's move on to that little juicy tidbit if we lived in a perfect world and could take a season or a show and do what we want well that's what fan fiction's for so if I was writing this season I actually would have split it into two having four different plot lines in 10 episodes is not enough time to have the right amount of growth for what they're trying to go for, especially when you have 
bigger storylines like the the vampire uh, vampire ladies. They're trying to do this whole huge thing, which frankly, which wish we would have gotten to see more instead of them just talking about it ad nauseum. Um, but you know, that's what happens when you cram so many plot lines. You know, if we had broken it up and had like one season is going to be focused on this or and then the other season is going to be focused on the other two or if we had more episodes and I understand it's like they don't always have a lot of control over that so they're trying to make do but it also shows like yeah when you have to make do you have to sacrifice things and what's being sacrificed is good full complete storytelling so I don't know what you want you really can't have your cake and eat it too apparently but I feel like that is what the show suffers from the most is the pacing is affected because everything is really crammed in there um and the storylines that really do get the most meat from them is something like Isaac's where it's really character driven as opposed to Alucard uh, babysitting spoiled entitled children and vampire queens trying to like get the ball rolling on what they're trying to get rolling. Overall, you just kind of get this sense that they bit off more than they could chew in this season, um, which is a real bummer because the pacing of the other two seasons isn't, you know, it doesn't, it's not impacted like this one was. So I think just to kind of wrap it up in terms of what we can kind of speculate to see for season four, I would say, Let's have a little more growth for Trevor, especially, but you know, the the both of them, but him especially. Um, I think as well as that, please give me more Smoojin. Well, not more. We didn't get any from them. Give me one. I will give you my soul to see one smooch between them, please. And I would hope as well for season four that they really commit to Alucard going crazier and crazier. Like if he's supposed to be a reflection of his father, then commit and show that. I want to see his struggle. But as we've seen, showing and not, showing is not the strong suit. <laughs> showing, don't tell in terms of him, but also in terms of the vampires. Like they really had a hard time with that. I want to see more. Don't tell me everything. And I would say, especially for Lenore, it's like y'all hype her up. I actually want to see what else she's capable of. It would actually be really cool to see if like she was conniving this whole time with her rings of, you know, like I'm gonna be the one on top. I don't think that's gonna happen because they're all like sister love, sister girl power. You know, I don't see that happening, but it would be cool if she was actually like, that would show that she's so smart to be like, actually, I'm going to be Queen B and I'm going to trick all y'alls. And then these are just kind of my own personal wish list for the season. I would love to see a fight scene between Isaac and Trevor and Sypha because I feel like they're all leading up to something big like that. And season three did not have as much action as the other seasons. Um, so would just for purely based you know the animation is incredible in this show just for my own personal selfishness I want to see that and then just kind of for my own like speculation I feel like either Hector is going to realize that he is a dumb baby and kill Lenore or you know like that will be his redemption or Isaac is going to kill him because he is a dumb baby and Isaac is like you're dumb baby this is what you deserve that's kind of what I'm thinking is going to happen I'm not sure um I feel like really if Hector is going to grow and show that he actually has more than two brain cells ping-ponging around in his brain he will take the steps to actually kill I would say Lenore but you know if it's the other vampires then so be it but like she's his big antagonist if you will at this point but that being said I don't know I have really really low hopes low expectations the bar is in hell for that kid so i don't know i think there are some very interesting points that could happen in season four um obviously it's building to this greater story where they're all going to styria somehow trevor and sypha need to catch wind but i feel like they're going to go back to alucard and and deal with this little emo child first i'm not sure there are some interesting implications to season four i am excited cautiously um my hopes and expectations I am going to lower them a little bit more because frankly watching this season was a bit disappointing 
I say a bit disappointing, like I haven't just spent the last however many minutes ranting about all the things I hate in this season, but what to do. I think that there is a lot of room for growth and I think there is also a chance for them to kind of look on this is what didn't go well in season three, here's how we can do it better in season four. But I don't know, only time will tell. I am excited to see what happens. Um, and I guess we'll see if I make another video. It, either it's a good thing or a bad thing, I am not sure. That's all I got for you guys today. Thank you for coming on this rant journey. There will be more things in store rant-wise. Um, I'm going to be looking at just kind of writing tropes in general, books, movies, story. If there's a story, we're gonna rant about it. If it's not a story, we also are going to rant about it, uh, just in the scope of storytelling in general. Um, but yes, that's all I got for you. If you did enjoy this, please leave a like or a comment. I do want to know what you guys think. If you agree or disagree, that's totally fine. Just don't be a weenie in the chat. Um, and yeah, I do. I want to hear your thoughts. So hopefully it's not just me that had frustrations with this season. Um, and if it is, that's okay. And I can live with that fact. But at the end of the day, go ahead and give our podcast a listen. There will be links below to where you can listen. Um, you can check out other videos on here. We do a lot of book reviews. Uh, and honestly, there's, it, there's too much to go into and I'm very hungry so I have to go now and that's all I have. I hope you have a wonderful blessed day and as always goodbye mom.